entire life, I've wanted to be a farmer, ever since I was a little girl. Most little girls had dolls, but you know what I had? I had a saddle and a hoof pick right next to my bed. So one of the things that we got were goats, because goats are cool and awesome, and every farmer is supposed to have goats, right? So we got the goats, and we had to breed the goats, because you need to breed goats to get milk. This is Ophelia. When she went into heat, we took her up north to meet the buck of her dreams. And let me tell you, he was one handsome little guy. So five months later, on a really cold, blustery winter night, my husband and I helped deliver Biggie and Smalls. <laughs> Biggie and Smalls were charming little fellows. You can guess which is Biggie and which is Smalls. Unfortunately, they were boy goats. If one of them had been a girl, we would have kept one, but because they were boys, I actually learned things like castration and all this other yucky stuff that hopefully none of you will have to learn. The goats were great. They gave great milk, wonderful fertilizing poop, and best of all, a sense of peace and calm in their warm, gentle presence. Now, I wanted to go in my backyard, and I wanted to be able to create a meal. So that meant getting chickens. And it was interesting. One place we lived, a neighbor actually put his pit bull in the coop twice because he wanted to teach the dog bloodlust. Next, we tried getting fertilized eggs, slipping them under a hen, and we got eight roosters and two sickly hens that later died. But hey, you know, we learned, and the birds are great. Look at these sweet little ladies here. And let me tell you, homegrown eggs are beyond belief. They are the tastiest things imaginable. And it is really fun to go out in the morning. And if you have chicks, it's a great way to start the day. So here are some chicks, because you've got to renew your flock about every two to three years. There was recently an article about this, and sort of the downside of, of urban farming and chicken raising is you gotta like do something with the old hens. So the other thing that's great is raising your own produce. I mean, it's really, really amazing to be able to go in the backyard and create a meal. One problem is everyone loves my produce. The crows, the slugs, neighbors walking past, and probably the person or the thing who likes my produce most is our family dog. This is Leo right after he has completely decimated my pea plants. And he's like, yeah, those peas are mine. You are not getting those peas. But, you know, you put up a fence and you kind of learn what to do. So another challenge, because I'm an Arizona girl, is figuring out the weather here. So finding what kind of things to grow, growing things indoors, and then best of all, using season extenders, which basically translates into a bunch of plastic. Here's my backyard in Columbia City, and I truly can go out in the backyard now, and I can kind of pick what I want. There's rhubarb, there's a bunch of raspberries, there's vegetables, there's herbs. But let me tell you, the best thing about urban farming is you get to play around with all the cool stuff that you grow. So we've pickled radishes, we've canned tomatoes, we've done beets, we've made yogurt, and of course, we've cooked up a storm. Now, we've already heard about the benefits of alcohol, and so we made some plum wine, and then we made some ginger beer, too. And the plum wine was actually from the neighbor's plum, so that was really awesome and fun to have that. Now, usually when most people think about urban farming, they think about the food side. But you can also grow all this cool stuff to make shit with. So you can, like, you can grow plants to make natural dyes. You can make basket materials, essential oils, all that kind of stuff. So if you'd like to learn more about urban farming, or if you want to find out if we ever actually get off the grid, actually ditch the grocery store, there's a blog, urbanfarmhub.org. And I'd love to have people, if you have any specific questions, please shoot me questions. If you've got stories that you'd like to share, I'd love to hear your stories. And I promised my family I would not do animal imitations, so I'm done. <laughs>